Uh, yeah, what does this mean for Te Pāti Māori? Three seats. Wow, for... yeah, it was it was quite shocking times. I eh? just those initial results going, what? Okay, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, well, yeah, quite quite the win for them. Like yeah. really, like some of those seats that we never really thought would flip. I mean, they kind of show how how hard it is to poll in the Māori electorates because none of the polls predicted this. Mm -hmm. And of course, now we've got the specials to come as well. And last time round, um, on election night, Te Pāti Māori had twenty three thousand party votes. On the final count, 33,000 party votes. So wow, they so could go... a third last yeah, election. Yeah, and so we don't know what's going to happen there because there's some arguments that, you know, some of the special voters are kind of... Most of them are more dis disorganised people voting out of electorate, mm -hmm. uh, like myself, um, <laughs> but only 10% are overseas. But yeah. those disorganised voters last time, there's that argument that they were showing up for cannabis, to vote for cannabis, right. and while they were there, they're like, oh, yeah, cool, whatever. But actually, that undermines the fact that Te Pāti Māori did, like, a good turnout game, a good Māori role change game, and like we really were trying on that flax roots type kaupapa, and yeah, so we just don't know what's going to happen. Well, let, let's go through some of the surprises. I mean, uh, oh, first of all, uh, Debbie Nari Wapaka, not a surprise there. She romped it in, didn't she? No, but the, the difference was the surprise, right? Is that, yeah, for her and for Rawati Waititi, that margin was massive. Mm, okay, now the surprises though. Waikato Tano, yeah. this is massive, isn't it? Yeah. The Nai Mahuta has held that seat since yeah. when? Since it was formed? Nine 96. And oh. so this reminds me of actually in 1996 where Fetu Tirikatani Sullivan got ousted by, you know, New Zealand First Type 5 and left the Te Taitonga electorate. It's what it happens in Māori politics sometimes that someone with that dynasty, they've been in the seat, they haven't necessarily done that material change that a lot of Māori voters want, mm. and then they reject them for the, the new up-and-coming person. And that is, of course, Hana Rafti Maipi Clark. What kind of campaign did she run? I mean, she must have really targeted younger voters, having been... Well, yeah. Is she our youngest member of parliament? Yeah, well, because we keep saying as well, I think all the media and commentators of political science keep saying to her, oh, they targeted the rangatahi vote, but she's been really careful to say, no, actually, we were getting around all the rural areas, all the marae, and, like, getting out to all the different ages mm. because she can't have just one on rangatahi alone, although I'm sure she did really well with them. Yeah, yeah, OK. And then the unexpected... Te Tai Tonga, uh, flipped by Takuta Ferris over mm. Rino Tirakatene. Yeah. That's another massive din political dynasty. Up. One big thing to look at in these electorates yeah. is where there were Green members standing and not. So in previous oh. elections, actually, when you looked at the Greens plus Te Party Māori vote versus Labour, it was quite close for the candidate vote in Te Tai Tonga. So this time round, if you look at Tamaki Makoto and Te Tai Tokoro, mm. they're the two that had Green candidates, and those 2,000-odd votes, 3,000-odd votes would have made the difference in those seats. So it's actually that whole... It does seem like a lot of those Green votes actually do take away from Te Pāti Māori's votes. Those two seats that you mentioned, which uh, Labour at the moment has hanging on to with about four or 500 votes, <laughs> could they go in the specials? They could. They, they really could. It's, it's like a, it's four to five hundred votes. It's possible, but again, it's like we can do our best to predict it based on 2020. But it's it's again, 2020 was a weird election. This one's the tide going out or whatever. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's I think too hard to call at this point. We'll be waiting. Okay, I just because Te Pāti Māori did has done so well on the electorates, mm -hmm. it causes this seat overhang in yeah. Parliament. Can you briefly explain what the hell's going on? Yeah, so basically the party vote for Te Pāti Māori gives it a certain number of seats in that overall parliament, but they've won more seats than what they would have gotten or been entitled to on the party vote. Mm. So that's what we're waiting for now. We're waiting to see if those two north seats, um, Tāmiki Makoto and Titai Tokoro, go to Te Pāti Māori because we will have that overhang and it changes the math. We might end up with, you know, 122, 123 seats plus Port Waikato. There's all that math that we've got to go on. I think a lot of us will be, like, making really fun seats spreadsheets in the next few weeks. <laughs> well, then you might be making fun spreadsheets. Yeah, I'm I'll not sure be. about me, but I'll let other people I think do. other people should. It's good fun. <laughs> OK. And I just Ratios. Wanted to, I just wanted to briefly mention one other seat, Ikoro Rafferty. So mm. this is Mecca Whaitari. Mm. She, she left Labour, she yep. took a gamble, she went to Te Pāti Māori, and she didn't make it. What yeah. happened there? There's definitely something going on there around, you know, there's, there's things like the, the cyclone recovery, of course, in that seat. These things like people feeling that it has been a Labour stronghold. Um, and then also there's people's personal views on the way that she went about that change. Mm. So, it, and, and also the other thing is, is that we've had that mood of change, that intergenerational sh shift in these Māori electorates. And so she is that kind of... She's been in for quite a while. She is that kind of past generation. So a lot of factors there that I bet, yeah, will be one of those things in Māori 
politics we'll be talking about for but a just, while. But just wrapping up, a huge result for Te Pāti Māori, given that, uh, is it just two elections ago, they weren't even in Parliament? Yeah, and they're definitely a renewed party. They're definitely more economically left this time around. And, of course, they've got the demographic wave on their side. You look at the incoming, mm. the people voting, uh, ageing into voting, um, yeah, this huge generational shift. The Māori population distribution looks like a, 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 a triangle, pretty okay. much. So, yeah, every day there are more Māori voters. Dr Lara Greaves, thank you so much for your insights into the Māori electorates. Tēnā koe. Okay.